training, something that is so crucial if you want to be a competitive cyclist. Everyone that has some sort of result has an opinion about training and how to do it. Today, myself and my coach, Tyler Williams, a very respected American professional cyclist, are going to walk you through what a week of training looks like for me and why it looks this way. Here's our opinion, let's run it. Before we dive into this video, I do want to say that our code at First Endurance is fixed. So you can go ahead and use code EJTRAINS for 25% off at First Endurance as many times as you want. I absolutely love their stuff, so I recommend trying it out. And with that 25% off, it's not a bad deal at all. Okay, so today we're gonna break down my training, walk you through what a week of training looks like for me, why I do certain workouts, and how Tyler is attempting to shape me into a better cyclist. In one of my latest videos, I said I would do a breakdown of my workouts and also some sprint workouts that I do to help increase my sprint power and leg speed. So let's get into it. Coach Tyler has me training anywhere from 18 to 22 hours during a typical training week. There are some weeks that are bigger volume and some that are less, but that's my average. My weeks usually consist of two to three days of intensity with the rest filled in with some recovery days, endurance days, and some tempo sprinkled in there. Tally does a really good job of balancing my fatigue while also making me stronger. This is what makes a really good coach. So I hopped on a Zoom call with Tyler and we dove into it. We were looking at the week before CBR and after the race. CBR was the first race that I did of the season last Sunday. We'll go into last week a little bit too. Okay. You know, you shared on the, the race video about, you know, the email that I sent or the document yeah. I sent out talking about the racing and stuff like that and how these early season races, I might not taper somebody down totally like I would for like an A-level race or you know, something that they really cared about. I mean, you decided that you were doing CBR like three days before or something. Basically, we last minute kind of changed some stuff around. You still had a pretty good load going into last week. We were starting to touch some like more specific VO2 work here. EJ doesn't know how to do easy days that good sometimes. But then like, you know, we're just doing some endurance. You had, you had this the uh, real fun threshold Thursday. Cool one that Luke was doing and I liked it. But it's kind of like an intro to threshold basically. So it's two on at 105% FTP and then one off at, you know, recovery okay them too and that's kind of um, smart like early season to build yourself up in that threshold is that the reason for that it's like an intro you know you're, you're okay. gonna build up to it we're, we're building right like yeah. we're not like trying to be full 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 peaked yet so you decided you were doing cbr so we did so we still did an easy day you did a really nice opener ride and then you did two pretty hard races on sunday so that's sweet so going into this week you had yesterday obviously you had to drive eight hours so you have to consider maybe say your race even wasn't like crazy hard was yeah. it 200 tss or something yeah, yeah 201 you're not recovering right because you're sitting in a car for eight hours after exactly. so that's kind of important just like the endurance ride is basically to just like kind of like get your Kind of get your body switched back on into training mode. Like if I if I had put this workout here, you might still be a little bit blocked from the travel and rest day. So yeah. I just think that it was kind of nice to like have a day to like kind of like get your your systems like kind of firing up again. So today is currently Friday of the week that we are going through with Tyler on the Zoom call. I ended up feeling quite good for that endurance day, which was very nice. I was able to hit my numbers, felt a little bit of overall body fatigue just from traveling, but getting outside and spinning the legs really helped flush that feeling out of me. So now we're gonna hop back to the Zoom call and dive into this interesting workout Tyler had me do, the key workout of the week. This is kind of the crucial workout of the week. You know, I wanna give you a couple of days to recover on either end and a day to open up. So that's why I like, it's either Tuesday or Wednesday. It's kind of like the crucial day, uh, depending on when you're racing. Obviously you're racing Saturday. So so we'll look at this one. It's got, again, we're like starting to like work into some higher higher end efforts. Um, yeah. More. Sp more specific higher end efforts you've been doing high end efforts like pretty much all winter i haven't like prescribed a lot because it just kind of happens naturally yeah. at the sugarlands or just riding around or whatever so we didn't really need to do anything specific but now it's kind of getting to that that period when it's time so got a nice little warm-up and so we did a little nice six times 30 30 and then another set of 30 30s because basically those are like a little bit of a warm-up intro into okay. getting into the, the real load. And so the real load is cool. these five and a halfers that this still not, it's not crazy, right? Yeah. It's like high zone two for you, but then we're, you're giving it some gas and that's like, a, that's a VO2 effort. So you're giving it some gas and then going back to zone two, giving it some gas, going back to zone two. And then again, a little recovery, basically same thing, but one minute instead of 30 seconds spikes, okay. again, touching that, that VO2 zone and then kind of like flushing the lactate out of your legs again. So it's not crazy hard, kind of just like starting to like stimulate that VO2 zone a lot more. And also it, secondly, it kind of plays two purposes here. 
first is just like we're starting to work into that stuff but second it's just you know like getting you opened up equally yeah. for the next week that's not like going to do like a huge threshold or like really specific vo2 workout where it's gonna like blow you out kind of i mean like 151 tss over yeah three and a half hours that's actually quite an easy ride that workout was honestly super fun it kept me very engaged and was very stimulating for my brain sometimes on those longer workouts it's hard for my brain to stay engaged so i really like this workout because it switched up and varied a lot throughout the whole process it made my legs feel really good without overdoing it something i've been learning is you don't need to feel absolutely gassed at the end of every key workout day sometimes you do but not every workout is built for that purpose this one was one of those workouts where it was stimulating some zones like tyler said but overall a pretty easy day. I did do it in the rain though, which was a bit inconvenient, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Now we're gonna hop back into the talk with Tyler about some key sprint workouts that you can do to improve your sprint. And then we will finish up going over my week. Saw that there's three sprints at the end. And you usually mix a lot of those into different days throughout the week for me. Like sometimes I'll do sprint and endurance, stuff like that. And that's, mm -hmm. that's usually how I get my sprint work in, right? I mean, maybe later in the year it'll change. But do you have like specific sprint workouts that you usually do or you kind of just mix them in? I mean, my favorite way to train a sprint is just kind of like naturally. Yeah. I've been doing some more specific stuff, especially like uh, we have one hill that like you and I rode today where yeah. I do all, most of my like specific sprint training is actually on this little hill because you get a nice speed kind of launch into it and then you sprint up a pretty steep hill. Yeah. So it's you have to practice like really staying on the power and also it's pretty high torque. But then otherwise like yeah my sprint training is sprinting for city limits and we do the, the like the high torque sprint workout that I've given you a few times. This this is a good workout. A different, a different coach I give him credit is Nate Wilson's workout that he used to give me and I liked it. Well, I hated doing it, but I like giving it. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> a little zone three here yeah. to kind of get you to opened up again. And then some seated sprints because that just helps like activate everything. Your seated power, you do quite a lot, either sometimes accelerating out of corners or accelerating like across a gap or something like yeah. that. Like if you can do it seated, it's good. But yeah, this is like kind of like just like a big high torque one, you know, where you're basically starting at near a stop and then basically spinning out of gear and then standing starts, same thing. Yeah, and that so. just helps like leg strength and leg speed, right? Both those. Uh -huh. That sprint workout that Tyler just showed you has really helped me see some improvements in my long power. The hill that we were talking about is one that also helps you stay on the power over the top. You can do this with a short punchy hill near you, but the idea is to sprint up and over the hill and continue your speed over the top until your legs spin out. It's a great drill, but boy, does it hurt. Okay, back to the week's training. Yeah, and then, okay, so then back into this week. Another easy ride, longer one, because yeah. I kind of want you just to pedal. The easy ride this week was great. My training buddy, who you've seen a lot of lately, Andrew and I, tried to have these days be zero stress. This week we rode to a donut shop, got some donuts, and just enjoyed being outside and on the bike. The next day was for openers. We are doing a little longer opener. We changed a little bit of this around for you. I think openers are quite a specific thing to each person because I think everyone kind of needs something a little bit different. You know, this is kind of like what I would like to do. So it's, and sometimes I do like really hard ones. Um, it just yeah. kind of depends on how I feel. Zone three, where you keep your heart rate, you know, get your heart rate built up and hold it there for a little while. And then in high RPMs, it's kind of like getting light speed, making sure things, all your systems are kind of activated not a very long session of 30 30s but pretty hard so like 120 percent is you know well over threshold and then two sec 10 second sprints just to kind of like really Cap like it all off. That, that max power so that's pretty much the lead up to race day like tyler said openers are something that is specific so try to find what works for you i really liked how i felt with the openers we did before cbr so i'm going to keep it very similar to that I did the openers Tyler prescribed today and felt great. So I don't know if you caught that, but on Sunday, the day after race day, Tyler has me doing four hours. Why is that? When I was talking about like kind of training through some things, the reason I would like have him train the day after Sunday is because once this starts happening, there's not really, you're racing and recovering. So I mean, all through this period, you're really not going to be doing any training. So it's really important to make sure we have a nice, you know, good foundation still built all the way through here. And we talked about that today on our ride. Some of that I feel like I made critical mistakes last year was treating every race day as intensity. Like if, if you go back up to this week, you can you can see that you have four hours for me on Sunday mm -hmm. as an open ride, which last year I would just say, oh, I raced a crit. I need to recover the next day. And the other thing I kind of added into that conversation is like 
it's a bit of a mental thing yeah so like personally for me i even if i am doing just a crit like i like to have like an easy day it's it's harder for me to actually like even realize that oh i'm just gonna like kind of crack on there's all the things that come with the race like i guess like the hormones of a race and stuff yeah. like that so like you're, you're like stressed the stress that comes with the race the whole race day then it's still a very violent effort generally that's why i put open ride um i don't want you like i don't if you feel terrible then go putt around for three hours if yeah. you or two and a half hours or whatever if you feel great and you want to go like do like decent like loop and like have some fun or whatever but you just kind of need i don't i just think like not having that stress the next day ideally is is good um because yeah. there's just a lot of stress that comes with race day but yeah if you like say you're really only going to do max two hours this day between your warm-up cool down and your race and then if you took it like another easy day then you basically had like easy day still an easy day, easy day. short short and sweet yeah easy day so then you're like three easy days four kind of four short days in a row you got an easy day here it's just easy to detrain during a race period if you don't actually be disciplined with like keeping the volume going so this is a very important takeaway something i'm still learning about training is listening to my body Yes, Coach Tyler is here to guide me and I have things like my whoop that can give me a visual metric, but at the end of the day, learning to understand how you feel is going to be crucial for successful training. You sometimes need to crack on after a crit race day, but also sometimes like Coach Tyler said, it is okay to go putt around for a couple hours and take it more of a chill day. Either way, staying on the pedals and keeping the volume is very, very important so you don't detrain and by the middle of the season, you're not where you want to be. I really, really hope you found this quick overview of my week helpful. It was a highly requested one from y'all and if you have any other questions from this video, drop them in the comments down below. I really, really appreciate the support. I can't believe we were at 10K subs now on this channel. Like seriously, thank you so much. Let's keep this rolling. I'm looking forward to putting out more content soon for y'all. We have a race tomorrow. Really looking forward to that. You'll get another race day vlog like the CBR and some other fun stuff coming up. So guys, stay tuned. Please subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.